welcome viewers to the series of uh, lectures on uh, the Harappan civilization, uh, local origins and uh, this is part 6 of the lecture uh, as a sequel to what we discussed in the earlier uh, portion of uh, this discussion, uh, part 5. Uh, we would st uh, straight away move from there. Uh, in continuity. So, you do well to strike that chord of continuity if you refer to the earlier part of this lecture, part 5 of uh, the same title that is Harappan civilization local origins. So, uh, we were talking of uh, some uh, say uh, metallurgical operations, uh, some craft activities uh, and uh, if we see the degree of craft activity, the scale of craft, craft activity, the mature phase of Harappan civilization and try to understand it with reference to what was happening in the earlier cultures, Neolithic cultures existing in this area say Mehargarh and so forth and trying to uh, trying to understand that is, is it on account of slow incremental changes that uh, it must have happened in local uh, context or there would have been some intervention uh, happening uh, around 2500 BC leading to this dramatical shift in scale and uh, degree of craft production. Then we find that uh, we do have stray ivory works at Mehergarh, uh, which is an old Neolithic site existing in this area. Uh, but uh, they do not constitute adequate uh, evidence uh, for development of ivory, cra uh, ivory uh, carver's craft that we get to see in the mature phase of Harappan civilization. So, there is some kind of a qualitative difference between the two. Nevertheless, uh, some uh, ivory uh, work activities uh, as uh, craft activity did exist in uh, earlier cultures existing in this area, Mehargarh to name one. Similarly, steatite, shell, bead making, fans, uh, they were all in use uh, in the earlier period, in the uh, pre-Hadapan uh, and, uh, and uh, early Hadapan uh, cultures of this area. Uh, but uh, carnelian beads were something uh, that uh, were worked upon only in the mature phase. So, uh, even if you look at the entire uh, set of craft activities, uh, there are elements of continuities, but there are some uh, new elements also uh, coming into being uh, around 2500 BC that goes on to characterize the mature phase. Similarly, cotton is, is so, uh, so uh, characteristic of Harappan civilization. In fact, uh, the earliest instance of cotton cultivation comes from Harappa, uh, Harappa, uh, Harappan civilization uh, area, right, in the Neolithic context of Mehergarh and so forth. So, we do have mass of charred cotton seeds at Mehergarh, but no spindle world, uh, uh, whereas uh, uh, Mundigak, which is yet another uh, site in the Harappan area, uh, does have many spindle worlds as well. So, all these things are critical to our understanding of how, uh, how all these developments flourished into uh, mature phase as, uh, as a civilization over and beyond the precincts of merely being a Neolithic culture. Uh, similarly, appreciable increase in the skills and scale of craft production in the mature phase uh, is, is so evident, uh, whereas in the sphere of subsistence and some house building methods or use of terracotta cakes, some elements of the Harappan pattern had already appeared. So, what does it mean? It means that uh, if you look at the subsistence base, if you look at the house building pattern or the way terracotta cakes were used as bricks, uh, sun dried bricks uh, to make houses and so forth, which are so characteristic of uh, buildings even in the mature phase, although they were fired, invariably fired uh, uh, terracotta cakes uh, uh, serving as uh, bricks uh, in the mature phase. Nevertheless, they are very much anti in the earlier period, uh, whereas uh, if you look at the skill and uh, scale of craft production in the mature phase, well, uh, not everything uh, is, is uh, uh, foreseen in the uh, pre-existing uh, Neolithic cultures. Uh, here are some scholars I am quoting on the slide 
who have studied uh, flaked stone tools, uh, but uh, similar studies for bead and shell work uh, are not available in plenty. And uh, if we have more studies on bead making and shell, uh, shell work uh, in the domain of craft production or artisanal production and so forth, uh, we may get uh, more fruitful insight into the origin or into the lineage of uh, uh, craft activities at this scale in the mature phase in terms of what was happening earlier in the, uh, in the uh, early Harappa or pre Harappan Neolithic contexts. Uh, also, uh, not available is any detailed analysis of the distribution and possible ways of utilization of seals and ceilings. Now, seals and ceilings is something that is again so so characteristic of mature uh, phase of Harappan uh, civilization. Uh, but if one carries out uh, what is the distribution pattern in the earlier period of such findings, maybe we are able to have a fruitful insight into the origin issues of uh, Harappan civilization and uh, there are not very many uh, works available uh, to offer us that, that uh, insight. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, identification of core elements, uh, when I say core elements what I mean is uh, those, uh, those uh, attributes which uh, or those, uh, those aspects of Harappan life which occur in high frequency across the sites. Uh, so, uh, identification of core elements in distribution of typical artifacts. Uh, so, what are typical, arti uh, typical Harappan, uh, mature Harappan artifacts? Pottery, metal tools, weights and measures, bricks, cart and wheel models, terracotta cakes, seals, uh, scripts. So, uh, if you, uh, if you uh, just do uh, uh, a study of uh, the frequency at which they appear at different sites uh, because they are core elements of mature Harappan civilization and try to understand its contrast uh, with respect to figurative art, death ritual, shapes of metal vessel, uh, shapes of metal vessels and so forth. Then again, uh, we are likely to have uh, fresh uh, insights into the origin issues and so, uh, maybe that future researches on these lines can offer us, uh, offer us more uh, meaningful uh, ways uh, to, to understand the origin issues of uh, Harappan civilization. Uh, similarly, uh, the findings that we are talking about in terms of early Harappan uh, features and mature Harappan features. What is very striking is, uh, is, is as, as to how the household pots uh, are, are uh, strikingly similar across the Harappan cities and villages. Now, uh, if you ask uh, archaeologists, they tell us that uh, political boundaries are not uh, uh, coterminous with uh, ceramic horizons. They are neither coterminous nor congruent with ceramic horizons. What does it mean? That dynasties may change, uh, political systems may change, but uh, uh, say ceramics that uh, or pots and potteries that people use uh, as part of culture, as part of way of life might continue unchanged. So, uh, so uh, I mean, uh, uh, if uh, if there is a particular way uh, in which uh, potteries are made by people living in an area and there is some intrusion or there is some, uh, some entry of new political force, new political uh, uh, you can say impact, then it is not likely to always be seen with reference to a changed pottery tradition. right? So, uh, historians uh, making conclusions on this basis is also something which is little tricky and one should be mindful of this. Uh, similarly, there have been some very fruitful studies that have been carried out by say fair service and that is uh, that's a well known uh, study, man land relationship around uh, Mohanjodro where he spoke of deforestation, overgrazing, uh, population pressure, inability of the, uh, of the uh, say, 
village areas around uh, or what what he what is known as hinterland for any city so the hinterland perhaps is not able to uh, not able to keep up with the demands uh, generated by uh, the population at uh, mohanjodaro or even the cattle population the overgrazing by cattle leading to denudation leading to soil denudation uh, and that could have had an impact on the agri agrarian potential of the hinterland around mohanjodaro leading to uh, decline of uh, mohanjodaro as a city as a thriving city now these are uh, new uh, ways in which uh, studies have been carried out although it's an old study now but uh, it it's a credible study that is uh, that is usually uh, cited in uh, popular textbooks uh, to drive home uh, the the point of a gradual decline of harappan civilization not on account of one factor but uh, it could be ecological environmental factors as well uh, similarly leshnik and shrinath nagar uh, have worked on varying land use patterns on the indus alluvium uh, uh, the necessity of lift irrigation in some areas harappan agriculture remember was labor intensive harappan urban fraction was much lower than that of mesopotamia uh, so uh, i'll i'll just explain to you as to uh, what is it that they mean by all these when we say harappan agriculture was labor intensive why it is labor intensive because we have already discussed that overall condition is semi arid there are towns and cities and uh, trade uh, happening so there is non there is a vast multitude of non agrarian population subsisting uh, in the mature harappan civilization and uh, to sustain them uh, some amount of uh, advanced amount of uh, agricultural pro uh, agricultural pro uh, production must be happening so so how was that facilitated uh, either the uh, artificial ways of doing uh, agriculture or irrigation must have been there or a uh, lot of labor must have been uh, organized to to uh, to uh, do to make this possible now uh, when we say uh, harappan urban fraction being lower than that of uh, mesopotamia uh what we uh, what we uh, mean here is that if you look at the map of uh, harappa so what you find is uh, that uh, the harappan map uh, will give you uh, less dots or uh, the uh, habitation sites are represented as dots uh, on on uh, political map and you will find that mesopotamian bronze age civilization map is having more uh, higher density of uh, dots as compared to that of harappa what it means is that harappan uh, settlements harappan towns are separated from each other by good distance as compared to mesopotamia so the concentration of sites in mesopotamia is more as compared to harappa and yet uh, harappan uh, civilization is one civilization it has uh, it has uh, uniformity uh, it has uh, cultural uh, uh, cultural i would say similarities so how it must have been attained what must have been the uh, the uh, the agencies through which this uniformity could have been attained of course one was uh, it it requires mobility mobility across regions now who were the people who were mobile uh, in this uh, in this context obviously traders uh, people engaged in commerce and so forth could have been one uh, agency but more than that uh, it is it is believed that uh, mobile pastoralists in harappa uh, could have served as uh, uh, as uh, the agencies of linkage across sites and uh, this area has even today this area has a very strong tradition of uh, pastoralism uh, people who who subsist uh, primarily on the basis of animal wealth and uh, they occasionally do agriculture but uh, their prime focus uh, so far as uh, uh, survival strategy is concerned is on animal grazing uh, and uh, animal uh, domestication 
and since they used to crisscross uh, this area uh, almost as a compulsion of their lifestyle, so they could have been the harbingers of, uh, uh, of uniformity across regions uh, in this huge area. Right. Uh, for example, there is a possible pastoral camp in Gujarat, uh, in, in Hakra Valley, uh, and uh, that again tells you that uh, pastoral people are camping at uh, different sites in different seasons, and some of them uh, have left uh, evidence uh, as well. And uh, that could, uh, such studies again uh, is a fresh, uh, uh, serves as some kind of a fresh uh, insight into the processes by which this uniformity could have been attained. Similarly, Kesarwani has worked on the architecture of gateways. Uh, what does it mean, architecture of gateways? If you look at the size, if you look at the uh, opening uh, opening gap uh, in the gateways, if it, if 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 it appears to be very constricted, uh, even a fortified settlement uh, with a very constricted uh, entry point in the form of a gate it suggests that maybe it is a military site, uh, whereas uh, uh, if it is just for uh, aesthetic purpose or religious purpose or mass, per mass utilization purpose and so for public um, building and so forth, then there was no requirement uh, for the gates to be so constricted. Now, all these things uh, tell us a lot about the uh, settlement pattern as well as to why people are choosing to settle in an area. At times you will find Harappan sites uh, uh, existing in areas that are not very uh, conducive for, uh, for existence, for, for uh, livelihood. Uh, so even in hostile Makran coast, you have some uh, Harappan uh, outposts or some Harappan settlements or some Harappan sites. Uh, why, why they were um, uh, there uh, in those uh, inhospitable areas? It could be on account of some military compulsion, on account of some strategic reasons, on account of some trade purpose and so forth. So, uh, uh, these could also be uh, the reasons as to why uh, some sites are found wherever they are. So, it is not only for agricultural purpose or trade purpose or, uh, or manufacturing item purpose, but also on account of political, uh, on account of uh, say uh, strategic or military reasons that, uh, that uh, they could be there. Similarly, uh, we have earlier uh, referred to Harappan metallurgical uh, scenario and uh, some attention uh, has been given by scholars to this. Uh, for example, paucity of tin and arsenic alloys and frequent use of uh, pure copper is something that is uh, very much attested uh, in, the, uh, in the Harappan case and uh, absence of a metal technology in subsistence production is also very striking. So, uh, um, although it is a bronze, uh, bronze age civilization, but if you look at the proportion of uh, uh, copper artifacts or bronze artifacts with reference to, uh, with reference to artifacts of other, other, uh, uh, other uh, objects, say lithic objects, uh, then uh, uh, copper is uh, not preponderant, copper artifacts are not very many in number and uh, mostly uh, the items made of copper are made of pure copper the way they exist in uh, nature and there has not been much of a metallurgical intervention in, in, uh, in, in, in modifying uh, that copper. So, metal technology uh, in subsistence production is also very low. So, uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, we do not have uh, say plowshare made of uh, metals and even if they were made of copper, uh, they must have been uh, uh, not very hard and uh, in the absence of uh, hardness of uh, the metal, uh, its usage as uh, plowshare to till land for agricultural purpose must have been limited. Kenoer has uh, worked on basic uh, similarity in tools and manufacturing methods at production sites as well as uh, in decoration of bangles. Uh, 
Uh, however, little work uh, has been uh, carried out on technology of finance. Finance, again, uh, is a mix of uh, quite a few uh, other uh, uh, items uh, into one. And uh, uh, what, what, what can uh, be gainfully uh, uh, read from this is uh, if they are making some items like finance, it must have required uh, a degree of temperature to make it. So, pyrotechnology, it, it gives us an insight into the pyrotechnology. For, for example, if Harappans are not using iron, we know that there is some pyrotechnological limitation uh, that existed uh, in Harappa because copper's melting point is significantly lower than that of iron. So, uh, such studies uh, do have some, uh, some advantages in offering fresh lights uh, over, over quite a few things uh, that generally we do not uh, ponder about. So, having discussed uh, all these uh, uh, continuities largely uh, that go on to buttress the argument of local origins of Harappan civilization in a significant way, this is not to deny that there also are some discontinuities that also must be looked at uh, and uh, one should not go overboard uh, uh, by, uh, by uh, the local origin uh, arguments. There are some gaps and uh, uh, they are best uh, acknowledged uh, in scholarly works. Uh, for example, uh, seats of tribal chieftainships uh, or tribal chiefships uh, uh, had emerged uh, that, that had emerged in the early period, uh, say at early Kalibangan or uh, Banavali or Ramandheri. Uh, of them, Mehergad and Ramandheri were the largest and richest pre-Hadapan sites that did not have the subsequent Hadapan occupation. What does it mean? Uh, we have earlier uh, discussed about the possibility of uh, diverse uh, people or uh, say people from the uh, Indo-Iranian plateau interacting with the plain uh, area people uh, around Mehargarh, Mehargarh being located uh, at uh, the intersection of contrasting uh, physical features with the uh, plateau area to its west and uh, the plain area to its east and so very, uh, very, uh, very critically located uh, to facilitate this uh, intermixing and that could have uh, led to growth of political and social institutions as well. It is, it is not only about barter transaction and economy and uh, grazing and farming, but also growth of institutions and they are regarded as important uh, so far as catapulting of uh, pre harappan or early harappan cultures into civilizational phase is concerned right so uh, uh, there uh, there is a need to study the growth of uh, political institutions in the form of chiefships or it could be some other form remember we don't have access to written materials in the mature harappan period and therefore we don't know much about it but their role must have been very critical for example uh, earlier we were talking about uh, about agriculture in harappa being labor intensive that meant that meant that uh, labor must be organized must have been organized to facilitate this degree of agricultural operations now how it was coming how how was it uh, coming up it must have come up with the help of of the political uh, institutions and organizations of uh, chiefships or, or other agencies. Now, it is important for us to understand uh, the political, uh, political uh, uh, force uh, or political tangent to this process of uh, uh, local origins. Similarly, at uh, uh, and, and uh, we did say that at Mehargarh and Ramandheri, uh, despite being the largest and rich, richest uh, pre harappan sites, they do not exist in the mature period. So, maybe that there is a rupture in, in uh, political terms as well, in terms, of, uh, in terms of political institutions as well. So, they, they exist as some kind of gaps. Uh, at Nausharo near Mehargarh, the Cordesian level 1 is capped by a burnt stratum containing ash, debris, charcoal and broken or reddened bricks. Similarly, at Gumla, 
the late uh, Cordesian village is overlaid uh, uh, by a mass of burnt material and smashed walls and pottery. Now, that can be indicative of some skirmishes happening uh, between, uh, say, uh, political elites or it could be some community coming into uh, fight with each other, leading to some kind of a cataclysmic change uh, in the subsequent period and so forth. So, possibilities do exist uh, of, of uh, such, uh, such narratives as well. And uh, uh, future researchers are likely to uh, to prove, disprove, dilute, modify these uh, these narratives, uh, and that is uh, that is uh, for the future researchers to to uh, to do. Uh, similarly, in Hakra Plains, 37 pre-Harappan sites uh, with the total of 210 hectares uh, are there, whereas. Uh, in the mature period, we have 83 uh, mature Harappan sites and these are old data. Uh, obviously, if you update it, it would be, uh, it would be little more. Uh, and uh, here, the habitation increases to 450 hectares. So, there is, uh, there is expansion and intensification uh, in terms of habitation as well. Communications down the Bolan route uh, to Kandhar appears to have ceased with the start of mature phase. Uh, almost a closure of a frontier, something that we so uh, uh, so much in detail talked about with reference to uh, to Mehrgarh. Uh, that is how it is a frontier site uh, in terms of uh, contrasting geography and climatic conditions, Mediterranean type of climate and uh, Medi uh, and monsoon type of climate as well. So uh, that could be one a radical change of world routes to Indus plains from the west and northwest. That's also a question mark. So all these uh, changes could. Have have also been there, uh, but uh, uh, alongside this city life, writing, uniform weight system, regional specialization, crafts, industrial sites, maritime ventures to the Gulf and Mesopotamia appeared only in the mature Harappan phase. So, these are some of the discontinuities that we get to see uh, alongside a very, uh, very solid uh, base uh, for continuity. Uh, in terms of uh, what was already in use uh, in the earlier period. So, uh, what we have discussed in this uh, interaction is uh, that there is a significant uh, degree of, uh, of uh, evidence uh, and arguments supporting the local uh, origin of Harappan civilization, but there also are some gaps uh, that uh, appears uh, around 2500 BC uh, as new features of uh, mature Harappan civilization and that has to be accounted for in terms of future researches. Thank you.